with fewer and fewer of us lighting up. The drive is on to eliminate the deadly habit entirely. Now, Napier and Hastings councils have tightened their joint policy on making the cities more smoke-free. The policy also encompasses vaping and will ensure there are fewer places where people can light up. We've just increased slightly some of the spaces, so the, the main addition has been some of our pedestrian laneways in the CBD um, and, and adding those in and then we've sort of clarified the position on vaping. Uh, when we initially uh, put the policy together six years ago, 2015 it was, we were referring them to, um, um, to them as e-cigarettes, it was sort of those early days of vaping, so there was a bit of a lack of clarity in the policy as to what we were referring to. So that's one of the significant changes, is actually extending it um, and now calling it the smoke-free and vape-free policy. Bus stops are smoke-free and there's a 10 metre rule for the entrance to council-owned premises, meaning you might have to cross the road for a quick smoke if you're watching a show at the Municipal Theatre or Hawke's Bay Opera House. Why are you making more rules? This is actually a community response and a community issue. 5,000 New Zealanders die every year from smoke-related injuries and illnesses. And so we need to bring our community with us, be good role models and set good examples that smoking's not OK. And this is what this policy is is you know, not being out there having areas, public spaces with where smoking is. The councils are aligning themselves with central government's goal of a smoke-free New Zealand by 2025. One of our roles as a council is community wellbeing, so that's social, economic, environmental and cult cultural wellbeing. And you know, we see that ensuring that we're providing um, healthy environment uh, and spaces for our community uh, very much sits within our role. Why not just leave it to central government? Oh, something that really does need to be a partnership approach. Uh, I think by us actually supporting each other in this, it sends a much stronger message to the community and you're mu much more likely to get that buy-in if they can see that we're working together on it. If there's no consequence for breaking this rule you're proposing, what's the point? Well, what we've seen in the last 10 years and, and since um, 2013 when this was first mooted by government was that we used to see people in bars smoking, we used to see people on the street smoking, and now we don't see it. And, and actually the community do the policing. And so the community don't like seeing public places with a whole lot of smoke. So it's protecting their health as well as uh, the well-being of, of everyone and who comes into our playgrounds, our uh, parks, our CBD. So this is a non-punitive policy, it's not something that we go around issuing fines for. It very much is reliant on self-policing, but uh, because there's a number of people in our community that are quite passionate about ensuring there's safe spaces for our tamariki and rangatahi, um, it does work. The self-policing is very effective. And what about citizens going up and saying, excuse me, did you know you're not supposed to smoke here? And that's right, so that is actually what tends to happen in, say for example, a playground or particularly you know, those spaces um, where, where there are a lot of young people. Um, we do find that parents and adults um, are, are quite happy to actually go and just politely ask, you know, oh, would you mind not doing that? You can't actually do that here. Um, there's no expectation that anyone, anyone should ever put themselves at risk. So obviously, um, you know, it is all around the person determining themselves if they're comfortable to go and um, request, make that request. The stakes are high in the drive to stamp out smoking with children of smokers seven times more likely to pick up the deadly habit. Is this going to save lives? Well, I think we've seen a fundamental shift and change since the government introduced uh, smoke-free Aotearoa 2025. And, and if we carry along this way, then this is going to be the way of the future. So I'm hoping so. We really just need to encourage people and, and make sure our young people know the harm that is caused from smoking. Smoking's an addiction, is this fair? I think like any addiction, what we should be doing is supporting people that, um, you know, uh, have, have the addiction. And that's where, uh, in some regards, you know, the move to vaping, I, I can see there's some benefits to that when it's people that are actually using vaping to, to 
wean themselves off cigarettes. But at the same time, um, we do have to have that consideration for the wider community and ensure that the spaces that should be smoke free and vape free are. Uh, joint bylaws with Napier, the way of the future? Oh absolutely, we are a region so why wouldn't we do joint bylaws across many areas of our business? How many of your councillors smoke? None actually, not that I'm aware of. Oh no, I may be, there might be one, <laughs> but I'm not going to name and shame. <laughs> the new rules follow community consultation and are expected to be in place in both cities by the beginning of next year. Patrick O'Sullivan, Local Focus.